Well, today is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do, because I've had a few people ask me, is a two-year update on my B58. So we have here is my 2017 BMW 540 Xi, because uh, for some reason in Canada we didn't get rear-wheel drive. And uh, I figured I'd give you an updated video on uh, everything I've dealt with, the good, the bad, the ugly. Taylor has done a review on the vehicle prior, unbiased, but after two years of ownership, I'd like to kind of give you my input and let you know what I think. As you can see behind me, the vehicle itself is pretty filthy. We've got a bunch of bugs from the trip on the weekend. There's a nice thick layer of dust and yeah, as you can see, it's disgusting. So being that it's black, it's gonna stay dirty and it's always going to stay dirty no matter what you do. So first and foremost, we're gonna take it to a car wash. We're gonna wash it or at least rinse it off, but the vehicle gets driven, rain, shine, dust, snow, it doesn't matter. I have lots of vehicles, but still it gets used and uh, it's not just polished and tucked in a corner. So we're gonna get to the car wash and we'll check back with you guys. Damn, I forgot to bring my Milwaukee blower. Usually I'll have a Milwaukee, kind of like a leaf blower. The higher end one with a big 18 volt battery so that I can blow all the water off. But unfortunately I uh, didn't do that today for some dumb reason. Now that the car is washed, I can give you a better idea as to uh, what it looks like and kind of go over the small things that I ended up doing. Being that I can't keep anything factory, of course I had to play with it a little bit and do some modifications. And if you had seen our previous video, there were a few tasteful modifications I had done that I think make it look a lot better. And it doesn't cost a whole lot of money, but uh, I'll show you now. So like I did in the previous one, double slat grills. We have the eyebrows, the whole front's being PPF'd, very light smoke on the headlights, turn signals, eBay front lip. I have no idea where it's, um, what type it is, but uh, I'll leave the link in the description here for you guys. Other than that, there was small things like little accents. I really hated the orange side markers. Wrap those carbon, M style mirrors. We have an M5 comp style rear, rear uh, I don't know, lip, gurney flap. What do they call them? Trunk, spoiler. Yeah, we'll go with that. Light smoke on the tail lights, and a few things that I do need to complete because I haven't had enough time to finish it this year. I've been working on everyone else's stuff. The rear diffuser. So I do have the M5 Comp rear diffuser I need to put on, and that, for the most part, will wrap up the exterior. Quad exhaust, I haven't decided what style I'm going to be going with. Either an F10 style or a double walled kind of like rolled wall style on the newer uh, M5s. Other than little carbon fiber accents, it's pretty well the way I wanted it to be, fully blacked out and uh, murdered out, so to speak. Other than that, let's go over the performance modifications. Interior remains unchanged. The only gripe I have about the interior is the piano black. For engine bay wise or performance wise, we do have a uh, catless downpipe to uh, muffler delete. So it does sound a fair bit better. Doesn't quite sound like you would expect from a 540. Maybe it's more super-esque. But we do have a CTS turbo charge pipe. We do have the BMS cone filter with the adapter here. Now from there, I do have the FTP inlet and hiding underneath here, which is extremely dirty. 
but it kind of shows that the vehicle gets used is a super tu high pressure fuel pump pretty simple stuff it is tuned with xhp so stage three with my little spice added to it it does have x delete uh, for again whatever reason we ended up getting only the all-wheel drive versions up here in canada so this one here has been flashed to rear wheel drive and it's tuned on mhd currently it's running i believe just the 91 or the 93 map so the stage 2 plus high pressure fuel pump whatever it is i have turned it up on numerous occasions to e50 and it does pretty good if I had to guesstimate for power, it's about, I would say, 480 to the rear wheel. And uh, it does okay. Oh, I guess one other thing is the very audible clicky paddle shifts, which I'm a huge fan of. It might be a little bit much for this car, but you know what? It's nice. It's a decent blend of when you want M5, a little bit of luxury kind of thing, and you're not necessarily wanting to spend big bucks for the m5 i think this ends up being a very good was it cost effective option bang for your buck whatever we'll call it i'm happy with this a lot of you that have followed the channel for some time or know me well enough know that i did leave a deposit on an m5 comp it was a 2014 m5 comp in my perfect dream spec you could call it it was white with red interior, 60K, it had everything that I wanted, all the options, and didn't pull the trigger. It ended up having wastegate rattle. Dealership said it was perfectly okay. I didn't agree with it, and I got my deposit back and ended up buying this one. I'll take you guys for a quick spin, get it warmed up, maybe do a couple of pulls, and I'll give you the, uh, the good and the bad. Not necessarily bad, but I'll uh, call it as it is, and uh, yeah, see what you think. A couple of the reasons I ended up deciding on the 540 was because I wanted something a little more luxury. I wanted something that was still quick, still had the potential of similar vehicles like a 240, a 340, or a 440. It didn't make enough sense for me to swap from my E90 335 to a 340. I didn't feel like that was enough of an upgrade. So for the 540, it just made sense. Out of all the mentioned vehicles, it ironically ended up being the cheapest. And along with the being the cheapest, it had the B58. Now, I wasn't too familiar with the B58, so I did some research and realized, yep, I want that way more than I want an S63. So I decided on this one, and this one in particular, because it has the full M performance spec throughout. So it does have the if you can see the M stitching here, so uh, along with that, the blue stitching that comes with the upgraded, I believe, Dakota leather. It is more sport oriented, so rather than having the adaptive suspension, which is seemingly uh, useless and way too soft, it does have full M performance. So it is 15 mil lower, it does have upgraded M performance shocks. With that, you can upgrade them with uh, lowering springs. So rather than having to deal with the whole adjustability or the adaptive portion, you can put lowering springs on it. And since with my old M235, I never really changed it. So I leave it in sport and it's fine. It doesn't bother me. I'd rather get the sportier suspension and it's hard to say, but it does look like it comes with upgraded sway bars, upgraded end links and a few other things, which is nice in Canada. We get the M Performance styling, so we get the bumpers. We don't get luxury bumpers, which is great, but in turn, we also do not get rear wheel drive as an option. So this one, it is all wheel drive, which is good, but uh, for me and for this primarily being driven in the summer, it's kind of useless. Hence, X Delete Flash. A few other options over the uh, M5 comp that I mentioned prior is this being the G30, it is updated. So you do get neat, th okay, we're, thank you City of Calgary. For this, and I'm gonna do this quickly only because it's copyright music, but you could have all the gestures down, you have all of the options, it is touch screen, so it's the, I think, iDrive 6 or whatever it ends up being. 
it does have a bunch of different options. So you have Comfort, which is pretty standard. You have your Eco Pro, which is kind of gross. And then the Alpina one that I flashed. So you get a bunch of different options. You get the full digital display. And again, if you look really close, we have 150,000 kilometers. And uh, it hasn't had, knock on wood, I'll knock on my head there. It hasn't had or needed any major work. So it is on the original injectors. We did do the spark plugs. It, I believe, has had the serpentine belt done once. Fortunately, it doesn't have any leaks. No cooler leaks, no intercooler reservoir leaks, no cat, no nothing, which is great. I figured it's been maintained and the oil changes have been done half of the normal interval and uh, it does break pretty well. The only thing that this is missing is the M Sport brakes, but my understanding is you're looking at a few millimeters difference and instead of them being blue, it's silver. So it's perfectly fine. Another one of the things that I really do like is you could leave it in comfort and it's a very subtle, tame vehicle that's, I mean, it's a five series, so it's a bit bigger and it has all the fancy features, um, but you could end up putting it into the top mode and it does feel relatively sporty, especially when you end up running a little bit of ethanol. So let's see, oh, look at that. Everyone's stuck and I'm gonna, whoa. So it was spinning a bit and it was cutting the power a little bit in and out because I didn't have the traction control all the way off. So let's uh, fix that problem. Perfect. And here, we'll do one of those. So we got all of our, all of our options. We'll close that. So again, we're just on the 91 map, so it's not gonna be anything too crazy. So for here, it's still gonna be running about 18, 19 pounds of boost. It's not gonna be crazy with the timing. It's nice because the aftermarket support for a B58 is actually quite good. So this being the MHD, it's pretty good. It does everything that I would want out of it. And the tunes are really good. Biggest thing with us in our Peasant Canadian fuel is we generally run one map under the octane. So because our octane is bad, if we're running 93, we'll run 91 octane. And then we notice that uh, there aren't as many timing corrections. All right, and we're gonna go. Good. For what it is, it does really well. Biggest thing is timing delta for knock is zero. That's what I want to see. And then for whatever reason, with our fuel and with the map, you'll always get some timing correction as it spools up, but that seems to be here nor there. What did we hit for boost? 22 pounds. So that's probably during a shift and it's probably holding. Well, I have no idea. You guys will be able to see it better than I can. It goes without saying, it is a bigger vehicle, so there are some issues that you could run into with that. It doesn't feel like a big car, it doesn't handle like it, but if you're gonna be using it day to day in tight parking lots, it can be a bit of a pain. It does, fortunately, this model, it does have the parking plus mode, so it does park itself, which is great. Bit of a novelty, and I've used it a couple of times, but, at the end of the day, it's a big car. You won't be able to hear it because the roof liner is shut or the uh, sunshade. If this was open, there's a pretty noticeable squeak for whatever reason in the headliner. I don't know exactly why. Nobody's ever figured out what the reason is behind it. I didn't want to start ripping it apart. So if I don't have to, I just shut it. And I guess really that's the end of it. One of the other issues is the piano black it's a bit rough, like anytime you touch it, you're gonna end up scratching it. You can polish it and so forth, but the interior always gets dusty, always. So if you can see here, there's dust and scratches, fine scratches, of course, I barely touch it. But if you look at it the wrong way, it scratches. It's gonna need dusting every single day and if that's something you don't mind, 
having a little duster thing and giving it a swipe every day before you drive it as it warms up for the 30 seconds, great. If not, avoid piano black because it's a huge pain in the The last but not least is the color black. It's fantastic after it's been polished. It does look great in the sun, but it is notoriously awful for upkeep. This one in particular, we had the front end done. We did end up having it pink corrected. We did put a ceramic wax on it. No matter what you do, even if you hand wash it, it's gonna be dirty all the time, no matter what. I do slightly, to an extent, regret in getting the black, but when it is all washed, polished, and dried off, and looking perfect, I have to admit, it, it does look great. But it's kind of a thorn in the side where we have a gravel, gravel area in the back of the house, so a gravel alley, and the garage is dusty, so no matter what, it's always dirty. All right, so just parked up here. That's uh, that's pretty much my 540 in a nutshell. Look at that, nice, nice view. Not bad, not bad. Oh yeah, another reason to get a five series. Soft touch close. All right, well that's all for uh, this one. That'll be summed up as the good, the bad, the ugly. Not really awful, but at the same time, stuff to uh, make note of. That's why I bought a 540 and yeah, I think everyone should get one. Plus, I mean, look at this front end. It just looks good. Okay, that's all for today. We'll see you guys in the next one. Time to go chase down some N55s. Yeah. Uh, M5s, but for the most part, other than little carbon fiber accents, carbon fiber. Oh, good song. I'm gonna disconnect the microphone now and uh, I need to listen to this. I'm, I'm a little bit older than some. What's going on? Are you gonna cross or not? No. You're gonna play with your bins and scratch your head. Great. Hey, look at that dragon.